Hello, my name's Maria. Welcome to the Rich and Simple Living. Today I'm going to be doing some cooking in the air fryer and you're going to have to excuse this video because my mouth isn't going to be talking in sync to what I'm saying. I put the first video up and there was no sound so I'm just going to have to give you a talk over. Um, it'll take too long to put it all in captions underneath <laughs> and I can't remember what I said anyway so we'll just do a talk over and just have to excuse it. I don't know what's gone wrong with it. But we're doing sausage rolls in the air fryer today. And um, I feel a bit of a cheat doing it because I've bought the ready roll pastry. And as you can see, the ready meat, the sausage meat. Um, people have suggested to me, because I was complaining about this, the cost of it, it was really expensive and a bit miffed pain so much. And people have said, oh, perhaps I should use sausages and just take the skins off and I think that's a really good idea that next time I'm going to do that because the sausage meat itself is just so expensive so yeah um, like I say I've got the ready roll puff pastry normally I make all my own pastry I batch make pastry and I freeze it but it's short crust pastry that I make so I'm going to buy puff pastry i bought puff pastry i should say because i don't batch make that i don't really use puff pastry very much to be honest so um yeah i bought that and obviously i got the sausage meat so i feel a bit of a cad because everything's already ready made i've just got to put it together and see if i can do it in the air fryer it's an experiment everything's an experiment with me so here I am. I look like I'm moaning about the cost of it. <laughs> I've not got over the cost. Three pounds something it cost me because I had to get the finest one. They'd got no sausage meat in. They'd got no skinless sausages in because I was looking for them. And the man did have a look for me. He was refilling the shelves at the time. And he did look in his trolley to see if there was any boxes of the skinless sausages. And he'd have took me one out his trolley. But unfortunately, he hadn't got any on there. So I had to buy the sausage meat. So, yeah. I don't know what I'm telling you here. I have no clue. <laughs> I'm probably talking about something. I don't know what it is. Probably moaning about the cost of the sausage meat. <laughs> but, yeah. Or I may have been telling you actually about the time when I was at school and um, I hated having cooking lessons and because cooking was always last lesson of the day and I had to catch a bus home and she made you stay there until you finished your cooking. Then uh, if you were late cooking, you'd miss your bus. The bus wouldn't wait for you. You didn't do a head count or anything. And I had a long way to get home. I lived out in the countryside. I didn't live on a bus route. So my the school bus was my only way of getting home. And so I never did cooking. I always sort of um, skived out of it. <laughs> but this one time teacher took me to one side and said, I've got to do it. So. I just took in um, a packet of pastry, ready-made pastry, and a jar of jam <laughs> to make a jam tart. So she was quite annoyed with me, the teacher. But this reminded me of that when I'd got my ready-roll pastry and I'd got the meat, sausage meat. Just reminded me of it, made me think of it. So that's perhaps what I was telling you. I may have told you that story before. I don't know. Probably. <laughs> so, yeah. So it was... See what I'm doing, I don't know what I'm saying there. I don't even know what's happened to my sound today because all the different shots I took, none of them were working. There was no sound with any of them and I've no clue why. I don't know why. But, yeah, I've made sausage rolls before. I've done them in the oven, but I've never done them in the air fryer, never made them in there. I have Googled it and had a look at a few people who do it and it looks straightforward enough so even I should be able to do it <laughs> she says so yeah it's annoying isn't it when you can see my mouth moving and I've got a clue what I was saying <laughs> so yeah we'll bring you down see what I'm doing like I say I've got everything there ready there's my um, puff pastry it's quite good I got that one from Aldi's and it was um 99p or a pound something like that so i thought that was really good value a sheet of puff pastry so, uh, 
my washer's going in the background so I'll excuse any background noise. So I should be getting the pastry out now. Lay that out. I've used this pastry before. Um, I think it was just after Christmas when I made some turkey and I think it was cranberry sauce and turkey. I'm not sure if I put stuffing in with it and I made some rolls then with it and it, it was nice pastry to work with. It's a little bit tricky to unroll when you get it out of the packet and um, when you first go to unroll it it's a little bit tricky because I've got long nails and it catches the sides, I've got to be careful I don't sort of rag the side a bit with it. But once you get it going and start unrolling, it unrolls nice. But I did find that toward the end, when you've unrolled it out, the small end, you've got like cracks in it. it sort of looks like it's going to break up a little bit. So I've got to be a bit careful of that because I don't want it to come apart or come off the end just trying to adjust you there to make sure you can see everything because those of you who have been with me a while will know how small my kitchen is it's a nightmare <laughs> so that end bit there sort of is a bit difficult to unroll right out and i'm showing you there where the cracks are along there don't know if you can see them but it's like where the pastry's cracked a bit so i've just got to be careful that bit doesn't break off it's a nice size sheet really, pastry. So yeah, so that's the end. I'm going to cut it down. I couldn't decide should I cut it the short end and thought no, the long end would probably be better because that way I could roll it over and then chop them into smaller pieces. So that's what we're going to go with. I'm just wetting my knife now so I can cut it cleanly. Should get a nice clean cut down then. There we go. I'll be well, that should go through nicely. And I'm left with the two pieces. So I'm going to sort of put sausage meat along each one. Put that piece out of the way a minute while I do the first one. So the thing sticks to that paper a bit. You have to be a bit careful with it. Now, I was going to put apple in and stuffing in. I was saying I was going to fill it with different things like that. But I went against the apple because I thought, well, my apple's in the freezer and I didn't want to risk it going a bit um, soggy. I thought it might be a bit juicy with the apple and I didn't want it to turn out soggy. So... I went against the idea of the apple and then because the sausage meat has got black pepper and herbs in it I decided then not to do the stuffing either because I was talking about putting stuffing mixing it with it but I decided not to because I thought well if it's already got the black pepper in and the herbs I don't want to sort of overdo the flavour on that we'll just leave the natural flavour that's already in the sausage meat so I'm just going to cut it down so it's like long pieces of sausage. If I can get the paper off the bottom, that was a bit of a pain. <laughs> it stuck to it. But I've got the long strips off. So that should cut into four strips. So it should be enough to do those two pieces of pastry. So it's like one long sausage piece. So I've got to try and stretch them out like two pieces on each. Yeah. quite nice to work with it's just it's a little bit difficult to cut the sausage meat and a bit of a pain because you've got to peel it off the bottom because I wanted to get it off so that I add them in like one long strip so I've got to peel it off carefully or it'd break up because so originally I was going to sort of put in a bowl and mash it in with some stuffing but like I say, I decided against it. So we'll just take it as it is. So that does one strip. Squeeze it out a bit, make it go into one strip. Then I'll have enough then for the other piece of pastry. Oh, 
as me describing how we're going to try and stretch it out, <laughs> make it go all the way along. <laughs> It's a bit of a pain, this. Is it? This has never happened to me before. Where, Well, I think once I got one with no sound, but um, it was on the actual edited one where the sound didn't come out. The original footage had the sound, so I just re-edited all the original footage and did it again. And that was what I was hoping to do this time. But then I noticed the original footage didn't have the sound either. So I've... Um, had to just do a talk over because obviously I've done this now and I'm not able to do the sausage rolls again because I haven't got the sausage meat because I've already done it so I can't remake the video now so the easiest thing to do is just do a sound over so I've just washed my hands because handling raw meat got to be careful with that plus it's sticky as well so I'm going to do an egg wash now so that I can stick the sides together and just wash the top of it to give it that nice shiny professional look <laughs> i'm using duck eggs again they seem to be the only things laying at the moment i've not had chicken eggs for a couple of days now so i've been using duck eggs i'm showing you my cup i was telling you here about the cup we had two cups me and dean did same size we don't use them for drinking from because they're quite small but this one is dean's it says the boss mine's in pink and it says the real boss <laughs> i'm not sure where mine is must be the back of the cupboard i've not seen it for a while but i'll have to look it out so we've done that so now we're going to just wash the sides down so that i can get them to stick i wasn't sure at first what I was going to do, whether I was going to fold one side over and have like a side seam or to roll it. Because when you buy a sausage roll, they do tend to be rolled. I suppose that's why in the name, sausage roll. <laughs> they do tend to be rolled over. And you always have them the good side up. So that seems the better option, really. This one's a bit more awkward because... It's the nearest one to me. So I sort of had to do it away from me to roll it the other way, which was a bit more awkward because instinct was to come toward me. But I thought if I come toward me, it's going to probably roll off the um, paper and onto the surface of the worktop. And I was worried it might stick or something. So I thought, well, we'll do that one away from me. So I've got to try and roll it over so it seems side down. Yeah. I do manage to do it, as you'll see in a minute, but I was a bit concerned. I would have rather gone the other way. No. I'll just stick it all down to make sure the seam doesn't come undone. There we go. It wasn't too bad, really. But I would have preferred to have gone the other way. So I'm going to chop it into three decent sized pieces now. It's quite nice length sheets these are for doing things. I've got another one. I bought two of them and I've got another one spare in the freezer. So I think what I might do, um, I might do a fruit strudel or something with the other one. Because like I said, I've got apples and raspberries to use up, but more apples than anything. So I might do an apple strudel one day. I've got some sultanas that want using. So I might do a strudel with the other one. So I'm going to just slit across the top to put three slits in each piece. Got a bit of a gap there. That's the trouble because I didn't push it right up to the edge. But when it cooks, it might just... Um, I don't know, who's to the edge? Who knows? <laughs> so we've got them done. Now I'm going to have to tidy up a bit. I always have to do that because I can't get the air fryer out at the same time as I'm working because it's just not the space. So I'm going to tidy up and then bring the air fryer out and then we can pop them in. So there we are, just like magic. <laughs> the air fryer appears. So we're going to put them in there. I've warmed the air fryer up first, so I've got it quite nice and warm. I think I put it on for three minutes on 190, I think, just to warm it up. 
and I put a piece of the grease proof paper and they're very good those sheets but I left the bottom in the pan I haven't taken it out thought it's better for air circulating oh yeah bring you down to see a bit better to excuse all my wire I think I need a new microphone I've got some wireless microphones but for some reason they don't work in this phone either uh, I don't know why there we are we should be able to get the three in there I wouldn't dare risk putting more in there because they'll puff up and I don't want them sticking together so we'll put them in and then I can wash the tops of them it's easier to do that when they're in there I do like these little silicon things. Lisa bought me a silicon um, set for Christmas with spatulas and everything. So it's really good. I like this brush. And I like it because it's got a long handle and you can reach inside the pan with it. It's really good. So they've washed nicely. It's a lot easier doing it in there. We're going to put them into the air fryer now. Bring you back down. I have a habit of knocking it over otherwise. <laughs> so there we go. I think I put it on bake. I was umming and ahhing. I wasn't sure whether to put it on air fry or bake. I wasn't sure. Because I tend to put everything on air fry. But I decided then will go for bake because you do don't you you put your sausage rolls in the oven to bake so i thought i'm going to put them on to bake and we'll see what it does i've got the other one to do so if they went wrong i could have switched to air fry for the other ones so it wasn't a problem so i think i did a 190 and i think 15 minutes so I put it on to bake at 190 for 15 minutes and we'll see what it does on that. Like I say, I could always alter it, put it in a bit longer. I'm always a bit dubious, <laughs> but it seemed pretty um, straightforward. So I'm going to do the other one now, the other sheet, <laughs> and fill that with some um, sausage meat. So I've got enough now to do the other two. I've got Cassie beside me and if she hears a noise she barks She's barking down the microphone <laughs> so I'll split this like I say there should be enough for two if I roll it a little bit might be able to stretch it a bit more so this one does reach the ends better just stretch it along a bit I probably could have done with a bit more sausage meat. I don't know. But like I say, next time I'll take everyone's advice. And if I can't get skinless sausages, I'll just buy normal sausages. Just get ones that have got some flavouring in, some herbs in or something. And then um, it'll be cheaper. Because what's paid for this sausage meat, I could easily get a couple of nice um, supermarket packs and it would make a lot more. So I've just gone to wash my hands again because of handling the raw meat and, like I say, because it's sticky. But I've managed to get it a bit closer to the ends this time by sort of rolling it and stretching it a bit. So I'm going to wash the sides so I can seal it. I quite enjoy working with this puff pastry from um, Aldi. I think I got this. I quite enjoy working with it. Like I say, it's just the end bit that I worry might crack and break. But it's okay. It hasn't broken. So I'm bringing that one towards me. Now I find it much easier to do it that way. But then I've got the whole area this time to work on. So it's just easier to roll toward me like that. <laughs> that's obviously what I was saying there <laughs> so I'm going to cut this one into three again just like before if I can get through the sausage meat like I say it is a bit awkward to cut through the sausage meat is there we go we've done it and then I'm going to put some slits in the top again like I did with the first ones So 
that's it. Make some look professional. <laughs> that's them then all ready to go in when the others come out. So there we go. They're ready the first lot. See what they look like. Are they any good? Oh yes, look at the colour of them. They look nice. They've come out really well. They look good. They actually look like shop bought ones. Quite pleased with the look of them. So I'm going to have to put them on a plate now. So I can put the others into the air fryer. So just get me pinchers so I can lift them up because they're going to be red hot. Oh, Dean's got his eye on them. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Saying to him, you can't eat them yet. You'll burn your mouth. <laughs> but I'm sure he'll taste test them in a moment when they've cooled down. But they do look nice. They've cooked nice underneath, as you could just see. So we'll put them through on a plate to let them cool. And I'm going to actually test it first. I got a new meat probe. Lisa bought me a new one at Christmas. Mine is like a bit of an old-fashioned one. It's got a dial at the end of it. So she's bought me a new a digital one. And that's a lot easier to read. And this went up to 90-something degrees centigrade. So it was more than cooked. I think it needed to go up to 75 to be cooked. So anything 75 and over is perfectly fine, which that was. So we'll put them now, put the others onto the plate with them. Then they'll cool down quicker and I can put the others that I've just done and put them into the air fryer. Because by the time they've cooked, we should be able to taste test them. But look at these. They look all right. And it looks like it has come a bit to the end. It doesn't look that bad at the end now. I don't know whether that's because the pastry's puffed up a bit. I don't know. But they don't look too bad. But I'm quite pleased with them. They do look nice. Okay. I'll probably tell you now I'm going to have to leave them to cool down and they'll cool while I'm doing the others. Then we can come back and taste test them. So, we've done the other ones, I think. Yes, we've done the other ones. This is a second batch and as you can see, they've cooked as nice as the first batch. I could put them on a plate and I'll probably um, skewer the first one to see if it's cooked all right. Very wary with meat. I don't like cooking meat in anything other, other than the oven because I think it's because I'm not used to it. I wouldn't cook it in the microwave. Never cooked meat in the microwave. Um, I have done meat before in the air fryer. I did some gammon and whatnot. But... Um, I'm a bit dubious about it all, so, you know, normally with a joint of meat, I put a knife in and see if it's cooked that way and the juices run clear with the joint, but things like this, now obviously I can't put a knife in and see if the juices run clear, I do need to check. So I'm going to check this one now, check the bigger one at the end and do that. <laughs> I pushed it in and it seems like the meat's pushed in a bit with it. I waited to see what temperature it goes. It goes up bit by bit, you see, and then I have to see where it stops and know then that that's what's done. I think this went up to eight point something. I was trying to turn it around and show you. I don't know if you can see it. Perhaps if you're on a big screen, you might be able to see it. But this was eight point something. What am I talking about? 80 something. And that's cooked. So I was quite happy that they were cooked. Don't mind eating them then when I know they've cooked. <laughs> so they're the ones I've just done put them to cool and these are the first ones which have gone cool and Dean is waiting in the wings so you, you'll see him now he's waiting there ready to taste test them more than willing 
<laughs> so he's going to cut one in half so that we can have half of one each to test it and see what we think. I'll show you now what it looks like in the middle. There we go. Look, they look quite nice in the middle. And we'll try it and see. Now, Dean said pastry was really nice and it cooked nice. And um, it was sort of soft, not uncooked soft, but, you know, not hard pastry. And I said the same as well. It was really tasty and you could taste the herbs in them. So I'm glad I didn't put the stuffing in because it might have overpowered it. The Dean really enjoyed that. He said to definitely, you know, have them from Air Fryer again. Definitely do them again. And I think they're really successful. I would definitely do them in the Air Fryer again. Yeah, I was really pleased with how they turned out. Because although things look easy and you can have things ready made, like your pastry and everything, there's no guarantee it's still going to turn out good when you put them in your appliance. There's still no guarantees. But, um, I was really pleased with them. And yes, I would definitely do them in there again. And I'd recommend doing them in the air fryer. So, yeah that's it now so thank you for watching have a good weekend and take care of yourselves bye